you actually edit a movie? So obviously it's a huge topic and a lot to cover, but I was wondering if you could just take us through like stage by stage, kind of in a nutshell, when you've got okay. this content and film, like how do you set sail on turning this into the end I product? I see. It, it, it's, it's a very long process. And the, basically there are two, maybe three types of sequences. You have You have dialogue sequences, you have montages, and then you may have action sequences. And when you're editing a dialogue scene, you are you're looking at all the characters in the scene and you are trying to uh, put yourself in the audience's point of view or put yourself in the audience's headspace. And you're thinking, who is the protagonist of this scene? So who's the lead character? Say Maverick is the lead character. And then who are the uh, secondary characters? So, you know, you've got Rooster, maybe Hangman, maybe Phoenix, uh, maybe Penny, whoever. And you're using the different types of shots that you have to tell the audience who has power in the scene or who is under pressure in the scene by choosing whether to use a medium shot or a close up and how to use composition to tell the or to infer to the audience about the character's state of mind. Um, Interestingly, you're always balancing information and emotion in a scene and information is the death of emotion and you want the audience to have an emotional experience. And generally speaking, the closer you are to a character, the more emotionally connected you are to them or the more the more that you feel like you're processing their thoughts. Whereas the further away you are from a character, the wider you are in the scene, the more it's about the geography of the characters, where they're standing. Uh, but it's less emotional. So you're finding this balance between making the scene as emotional as possible, but also trying to make sure that the audience is never lost in the geography of the scene where everybody is. Um, uh, some great directors will combine shots so that they start wide and then push into a character or they create coverage within a scene. But you're trying, you're trying to make sure that the audience is is having a seamless emotional experience from beginning to end. And they're connected with the main protagonist of the film, uh, who is Ethan Hunt or, or, you know, Pete Mitchell Maverick in Top Gun. And you want the audience to, to, to have an emotional connection to that character and to understand how they're feeling minute to minute through the film, what they want, what they're trying to achieve, what their obstacles are and how they feel about that through the movie from beginning to end. So, so that you, uh, so that you're completely emotionally engaged. And it's very, very difficult to get the balance of that right. But that's what you're trying to do during a dialogue scene is you're trying to connect with the protagonist and, and feel your way through the emotion of the scene. What does that character want? What do the other characters want? Where does the scene turn because normally there's a turning point in the scene where a character learns something or something significant happens you know how to make sure the audience are, is aware of that emotional turn um and then in an action sequence what's most important is that you understand the stakes of the action sequence so you have to set it up properly you know what is this character after in this action sequence what happens if they fail what happens if they succeed? And that is how you lean in and you're, you care about the, the end result of the action sequence. Um, making sure that the geography is clear so you can see where your protagonist is and where they are in space compared to the antagonist or whoever's, called, whoever's creating an obstacle for them so that you understand you know, what they have to achieve and how far they have to travel in the space to achieve it, all that stuff. Um, which is, you know, essential. And then it's about the rhythms and the pace and giving the audience, making it feel unexpected and exciting, using music to kind of allow the audience to put their emotions in certain uh, parts of the scene, you know, whether to feel excited, whether to feel suspense, whether to feel scared, whether to laugh. Mm. So so it's it's a very long process. So each day I look through all the footage I break it down line by line, and then I start building the scene with all those criteria in mind, you know, trying to make sure that that I'm always think, putting myself in the audience's point of view. What do they need to see next? What do they need to hear next so that they understand how the protagonist is feeling in any particular moment? Um, 
and it always starts out very long and lumpy and confusing and then over the course of the shoot you start building up the movie in the computer so that by the end of the filming process you've got like a very rough pass of everything then you sit with the director it's always a very depressing experience because the first assembly of any movie is always is always you know a, a mess to be honest and it's it's unfocused and it's very it's it's quite often confusing um and so you, so you, experienced directors understand that um and then you start working at each scene um and you take you know several days usually to work on each scene and you improve it and you improve it and then you work your way through the whole movie and then you watch the whole movie again and then you can start to feel like where it's working where it still needs more more um improvement where the pace is slow where the pace is fast and then what what you might be able to remove out of the film um to compress it if it's too long you're constantly asking yourself what can i take out but not sacrifice on the on the clarity of the story and the emotions from beginning to end um and it can take a very long time so top gun maverick took 2 years we had over 800 hours of raw footage on that movie um we got a similar amount of footage on mission impossible dead reckoning part 1 and that's you know we've spent nearly 3 years but we have been filming parts little sections of part 2 as we've been going along so it hasn't all been part 1 so probably if we were just doing part one, it would be about two years, if I'm being honest. Wow. But, you know, we started in um, September 2020. And as we speak, it's June 2023. And the movie's coming out in July 2023. So it has been, you know, a nearly three year journey for me. Um, yeah. And then you work on sound effects, you work on music, you work on visual effects. Sometimes on these big movies, the visual effects, you have to get them started months or maybe even years in advance because some of the visual effects shots are very, very complex. Um, and, you know, one of the things that you're doing is looking at the footage and working out if anything is missing so that you can feed back to the direct director and the producers that mm -hmm. we haven't got this little piece of action. So we might need to go back on the set with the actors and get this little piece to make sure that we, we, we've got everything covered before they knock the sets down, all that kind of stuff. So it's it's very creatively rewarding, but it's very, very hard work. You know, my days normally start, normally leave leave home around half past six, start work at half past seven, um, and then work till maybe, you know, eight or 9 p.m., depending on the day. And, you know, sometimes I'm home by nine, sometimes I'm home by 10. And that can be six or seven days a week, depending on how intense the schedule is. Um, so... You, you know, the hours are quite long, but I have a great team around me, a team of assistant editors who help me. And, um, but also I want to do a great job. You know, I, I'm passionate about what I do. I love what I do. And I, I'm, I strive to be one of the best in the world at what I do, um, uh, which is very subjective. So, you, you know, it, it's something that you can aim for, but you can never really attain. But I, I've always had that kind of drive to be really good at my job and to want to deliver the very best work every day. It's really the only thing you have control over in your life as well, because there are so many other factors, external factors that you have no control over. But the one thing you can control is how hard you work at what you want to achieve in your life. And so I've always had that kind of drive, you know, um, to try and be great Uh every day if i can that's great eddie